Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, we worship you. Father, we adore you, we honor you, we magnify your holy name. Father, we thank you, Lord, Father, for the gift of life, for your preservation, for your mercies, for your goodness, for your provision. Father, we say glory and honor be to your name in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. And Lord God and King, oh Lord, we have come tonight, oh Lord, at your feet to learn. Almighty Father, because your word commands us, oh Lord, I wish we study to show our, our self approved, a workman that did it not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Father, as we share your word today, we're asking that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you will grant unto us in Jesus' name. Father, mm -hmm. enlighten us. Father of all glory, teach us. Father of all glory, inspire us, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty yes, name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, our study tonight is uh, in continuation of um, the gospel according to St. John. And today our focus is on, on uh, John chapter 1, verse 3. John chapter 1, verse 3. And um, I will read John chapter 1, verse 3. He said, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And um, our topic today is uh, the creator, the creator, and um, the, we, uh, we remember in our last few studies, we discovered first uh, the beginning, and then where what he said, the, the beginning of the beginnings, and also uh, all other things are connected with it. And uh, in our last study, we discovered that God emphatically stated that there is only one Jesus Christ. All the others that you might be hearing, like uh, in those days in Nigeria, we say, uh, is it Jesus of Onyibo? 
and uh, all the others um, that come, uh, they are impersonators and they are not true. And we should not follow them, but follow the only Jesus, the Jesus of God, the Jesus of the Bible. The only genuine, he is the only genuine Christ. Uh, the, uh, the only genuine Christ is the one who was originally with God from the beginning. Today, we begin our study of John uh, chapter one, verse three. We face many questions, and uh, those are the questions we wish to address today. So questions as such as who created the heaven, who created the earth, evil and darkness, and so on and so forth. And I pray that the Lord God will, he will teach us, he will enlighten us, and he will make us wiser than the ancients in Jesus' name. And um, so we want to address the question, and uh, our subheading point number one is who created all things. And uh, uh, in that in that point, we are looking at why why are they created? Out of what were they created? And who is the creator of the universe? And point number two: Who appoints presidents, kings, governors, etc.? And who removes them when needed when need be? Who invented motor cars, radio, and all the things we know in invention? And the point number two: Who created darkness and evil? And the question is there any benefit in them i mean is there any benefit in evil is there any benefit in sorrow uh, specifically so tonight we quickly go to our studies addressing the first question in line and that question say who created all things and i will ask please um i give you a bible verse you please um quickly uh uh, I give it out first, and uh, I will ask that we please open it down so that when it comes to your turn, you quickly will read for us. Um, Patrick, okay. you will please uh, you will read for us Colossians chapter one verse sixteen. Um, Colossians one. 16. And um, the next Bible verse will be Hebrew chapter 11, verse 3. And we ask, please, that uh, Rasan will read that for us. And um, the third one will be Bra Ben. Please, you will uh, open for us. First uh, Corinthians chapter eight, verse six. First Corinthians chapter eight, verse six. Uh, so, Patrick, are you ready? Okay, while Patrick is getting ready, please, uh, Brother Sam, would you read your own verse of the scripture? So, Hebrews 11, verse three. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, my brother, what uh, in, in terms of the relation, we're asking, we're trying to answer the question who created all things? Yeah, so um, yeah, please go. The, the Bible passage is a truth which we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. You know, um the, the, the word of basically here it's saying that everything that was made was still true the inspiration from God. Um you know, in the in, there's a passage in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So everything that we have, everything that we see has already been accomplished spiritually before being manifested physically that's what i understand from this passage um so by the word of god so that things that which are seen were not made of things which do appear so i understand it that everything was already orchestrated by god and from there there's a it's like a design by god before things before things manifest physically you know it has already been um, agreed spiritually praise the lord any other contribution Hallelujah. from that verse, please? 
Please let us make it as interactive as possible. This is uh, quite an eye opener for many of us. Uh, scientists have been trying to tell us of the Big Bang and, uh, and all that and all that, the black hole and the white hole and all the others and uh, how the universe and things came to be. But the word of God tells us here that by faith, even as uh, it says, he that cometh come to God must believe that God is, and he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You require, somebody says that you require as much faith to believe in the Big Bang, as more, even, even more, or a, more to believe that than simply taking the word of God at its face value. The verse of the scripture we read said that all things, all things, it is through faith we understand. God has given it by, he has prayed that God is a framed word, that God framed the, uh, framed the world by his word. And so that things which we are seeing today, it was not made by things that were already in existence, but that God spoke them out into the world. And think of the alternative, the big bang is out of nothing, out of no, just out of bang, and then things and then were started appearing. And um, that uh, we know um, they, they have been struggling over the years and years and years and years trying to prove it, but still they haven't, they are holding on to that. But the word of God tells us that uh, the world was framed by the word of God. Uh, Colossians, uh, who is reading is it? Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, please. Patrick. For by him were all things created there in heaven and um, uh, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Okay, so what do you, what do you understand by that, by what you have read? Mm. The, to be, to be uh, if we go back a little bit in that verse of the scripture, it tells us in verse 13, uh, God has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son, the dear son, Jesus Christ. And in that Jesus Christ, say we have redemption and even forgiveness of sin. Verse 15, that he is the image of the invisible God, the, the first born of every creation, in other words, the beginning of the creation, or the beginning of the creation, and in the verse, that's verse 16, it says, by him, which is by Jesus Christ, all things were created, that were, whether there are things in heaven, whether there are things on earth, whether there are things visible or invisible, whether there are thrones or dominion, principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. So can we please um any how any how if we how do we understand it if you have any contribution can you please uh, give us praise the lord hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, we can see in verse 15 that um, they are proving the supremacy of christ they said he is the image of the invisible god and the firstborn of every creature. And we know in uh, John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Jesus Christ is the word who had been with God uh, in the beginning. And uh, we, we, by faith, is what we believe that uh, Jesus Christ Christ is the word. We believe that Jesus Christ is the, is the word by faith because if we don't believe, if we don't have faith, we cannot believe. So Jesus Christ, who, uh, who was the image of the invisible God, came into, into the world and uh, they say by him, all things were created. And uh, like uh, we really uh, are made to understand that when, when God spoke the word, 
it mm. was the the spirit of Jesus Christ that was performing the uh, creation. It says, "Let there be light," and because Jesus Christ is one of the Trinity, He does the work. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Maya. Thank you, Maya. Praise the Lord. We see, we see uh, in Hebrew, it tells us that the world were, uh, were framed by the word of God. And now it tells us connecting, uh, Mommy and Adi connecting, that word is the Jesus Christ himself. And in Colossians, mm -hmm. tells us that all things were made by him, uh, where all mm -hmm. things were created, uh, created uh, for him. All things were created that are in heaven, whether they are in heaven, in other words, heaven itself, the earth, and everything about it, they were all created. And Jesus Christ was the agent. He was the one the executing, the, 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 executing the, the command or executing the intention of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says there that not only that he created them, he's the one upholding the universe. Like the, mm -hmm. the, the like the question that was answered uh, that was uh, directed to Job, he said, "Where is the foundation of the earth?" And we know from geography that the, the earth is hanging in space, and also the galaxies and other planets they are hanging there. And it is the same Jesus Christ, the power of God that is upholding all these things, keeping them where they belong. That we we know that the sun is shines when it has to shine. The moon shines when it has to uh, uh, shine. It becomes dark when it has to be dark. Why? Because everything is orchestrated and up, up, uh, properly organized and uh, sustained by his power. Uh, uh, Braben, are you, First Corinthians 8, verse 6, please. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What can you say, please, from what you have read? In this passage, we, we can see that uh, it's further re-emphasizing that the Lord uh, Almighty um, owns everything on earth, including the knowledge, the wisdom, the inspiration that leads to whatever creations there are from man today. Uh, in the first part of the chapter, it says, of whom are all things, including men. And then when we look at the second part, it says, by whom all things are created. Just like Mominadi said, the inspiration to create or the words that led to creation uh, came from the Lord. And we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is the word and the creation that we have today. So the argument of who made the earth, who created the earth, I think this passage clearly outlines or answers that question, that we only have one God <laughs> and by whom everything that we have on earth today is made. We may see some new invention, we may see some new creation that appear new, but I think these are just extensions of inspirations that has been put into us as human beings. Uh, we can see that things have been learned, things have been discovered, but I think there's nothing new that has been discovered that has not been put on earth by the Lord Almighty. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that reminds me, scientists for many, 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 many years were debating, is the earth flat? Is it uh, this? Is it that? But why they were debating all that, these things were already recorded in the Bible. The, another fact that there are, there are, uh, there are tunnels, or do I say that there are tunnels, so to say, under the earth. They, they discovered this after many, many, many years, but if you read it for, for uh, 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 an impartial reader of the Bible, and you study the Bible, you will see these things have already been stated. God made it clear, but man will not accept it. So we have, uh, we have answered the question, who created all things? Why were they created? They were created for us to inhabit, for us to, for, because that's the pleasure of God, of our God. And also for human beings, like we have once said uh, 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 that before man was created, God made sure that everything was, was in place. And even scientists are learning that if the temperature of the earth 
were to be a little more different or different from what it is today, it will not sustain life. But God has made sure that the temperature it is what it is, the light is what it is, and the water is what it is, and all these things are, are sustaining life. So we have answered the question that all things were created by God through the Lord Jesus Christ, and, uh, and uh, who is the caretaker of the universe also. The Bible tells us in, in that Colossians that Jesus Christ, but he created all things and he preserves all things. He takes care of all things. We know if we have a car, we have a house, or uh, if we want that car to serve us, to serve us for, for a good a good length of time, he needs servicing, he needs to be preserved. And the same thing about home, once in a while, we need to put a new coat of paint. We need to make sure the roof is not leaking. He so also, God also sustains life. He sustains our universe. And he makes sure that our universe is of health. Praise the Lord. Now we quickly go to the uh, second question, the second point of our study today. Who appoints? Uh, we are dealing with the creator. Who appoints pre presidents, kings, go uh, governors, and who removes them? Uh, who invented motorcast radio, and so and so forth. So we ask, please, that um, I will ask, uh, uh, please, if you are, uh, I don't know, Sister Bukumi, Bukumi Afolaya. Yes, Bukumi, are you there? Yes. OK. So I will give you, you please, um, you will open to, to, to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. OK, you sir. Hold on first. I, you hold on. I will call you later to read uh, Proverbs. Uh, eight verse twelve, and um, uh, Adekule, are you there? Adekule, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Please, uh, you will read uh, Isaiah chapter forty, verse twenty-two to verse twenty-three. Okay, sir. And um, mommy, Nadi, please. Oh, yes. Sorry, before mommy and Adi, uh, Adebo Wale, Bra, Scotty, are you in there? Yes, sir. Uh, please, if you will read for us uh, Daniel chapter, 20, chapter 12, uh, we read first verse 21, and later on, we read verse. verse we read verse uh, four, verse 21 first. And uh, mom and Adi, I will ask you please to yes, open sir. Job chapter 12 and put your, your, your Job chapter 12 from verse 13. I will let you know what verses we read as time goes on. And um, Lord Triumph, are you there? Sorry, sir. Daniel chapter water. Daniel chapter 12. Initially, I will want you to read verse 21, and later I will ask you to read verse 12. There is no 21 in Daniel 12, sir. It stops at 13. Okay, Daniel, I think I've got, uh, sorry, verse, verse 2, sorry. Chapter 2, verse 21. Okay, sir. And Job. And Job chapter 12. Job 12. You will read from verse 13, but you, we, we, we will read it when we get there. And uh, so, Bra Sodic, you are looking at Daniel chapter 2, verse 21, and later on, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. And um, Lord Triumph, are you there? No, sir, he's not here. Okay, Pastor Grace, can you please you open for us Romans chapter 13, verse 1 first. All right, sir. And later, verse 4, yeah. So uh, uh, who is reading for us Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. We are asking the, answering the question, who appoints president, kings, governors, and so on and so forth, and who removes them? Proverbs 8, verse 12. Wisdom and good judgment live together. For wisdom knows where to discover knowledge and understanding. We are not hearing you. Are you are you finished reading or just? Um, Proverbs eight verse twelve. Yes, please. 
Wisdom and good judgment live together, for wisdom knows where to discover knowledge and understanding. Okay. So hold on to that, uh, because we are going to use that to answer the question about invention. Uh, who is reading Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22 to verse 23? Isaiah 40, 22 to 23. It is yeah. he who is seated over the arch of the earth, and the people in it as uh, in it are as small as locusts. By him, the, the heavens are stretched out like an arch and made ready like a tent for a living place. He makes rulers come to nothing. The judges of the earth are no value. Okay. So we are looking at... The question who appoints president, kings, and governors. It still might not be very uh, evident in that verse, in that verse of scripture, but it says, it says there that um, 22, he sits in the circle of the earth, and um, the inhabitant thereof, we looking, God looking from his throne, that we are all like grasshoppers. We are so tiny and in verse 22, uh, sorry, verse 23, he said he bring, he, bring, he bring the princes to nothing and makes the judges of the earth as vanity. In other words, they are almost like nothing before his sight. Uh, but let's go on. We still we, we get the answer we are looking for. In uh, Brash, sorry, please. Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. The Bible says here that Daniel 2, 21, he changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. Thank you. So the yes, question sir. is, who appoints presidents, kings, governors, and rulers? Can we, uh, from the verses we have read, uh, can we answer that question, please? Any contribution, Brasadi, what can you say? It is quite clear from verse 20. Uh, Daniel said, Then Daniel praised the Lord, the God of heaven, and said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. So from here, Daniel was very clear that direct change in things that happened and uh, the governance of the world is based on God. And God is the only one that has the final say. And looking at the people of Israel, especially how they became a people, became a nation, it was God orchestrating his own plan, even up to the point of Jesus, to make sure that uh, people who are appointed are following a particular manner. So we could see from Saul, we could see to David, we could see to the children, uh, Solomon, Rehoboam, Rehoboam, Jeroboam, and the likes, that God was specifically appointing them. And people who rose and rose against his will, we could see how God also removed them. We could see from Jeroboam, uh, we could see how Rehoboam also, Rehoboam also crashed. And so many kings of both Judah and Israel had were crashing. So Daniel, in this sense, was also relating to that, that God has the ability to change times and not just the ability, he utilizes that ability all the time to make sure that there is always a change in these rulerships. Thank you. Thank you very much. So like our brother has said, uh, if we look into the Bible and even uh, slightly even in our contemporary time, what is going on? When that Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Daniel was relating a dream that Nebuchadnezzar saw, a, a dream that spans, you know, that is even, even affecting our generation, our lives today, or rather the interpretation, the, the impact of those dreams of what was going to happen. And we know that Nebuchadnezzar was a great monarch, but when he will not humble himself, the Bible said that for seven seasons, for seven years, God made him to eat grass like, you know, like animal. And that is telling him that the most high rules in the kingdom of men. And he's the one that puts them there. 
even though they might, people might think they are electing and all that, it is God that permitted to uh, read. Let us also please quickly, uh, um, uh, Pastor Grace, please, uh, that Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Verse 1 to. Uh, Is it one to four or one and four, sir? Romans can talk, it's just one in, one is enough. <clears throat> Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Thank you. You say there is no power but of God and a power. So God has instituted that there will be authorities, they will be kings, they will be rulers. And uh, it goes on to say that we have a responsibility because they are agents, they are servants of God or ministers of God. That's what the Bible says, if you read down to verse 4, that they are ministers of God, executing or doing the, the will of God. And so we, they we're answering the question, who appoints presidents, kings, and governors? We see that God, God is, is involved. He allows you, we might go and do the election, but then the people come into power, they are there by the grace of God, they abide by the power of God, and God allowing them to occupy that position, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, rather serving his purpose, mean, or ministering to his people on his behalf. And if they rule well, they will be blessed. If they rule uh, badly, God also will judge them as God has judged uh, the nations. Uh, we, I was just reading re uh, recently about the appointment of David as a king. That David, the Bible says uh, 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 the spirit of God came upon David and the spirit, you know, uh, left Saul. The David was not even remembered by his father. It was out of his eight brothers, they all came, presented themselves, and God said, no. David was not even remembered, but God said none of them. And the, 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 the prophet was, he says, are these all your sons? He said, no, there is, ah, the youngest is somewhere out in the bush. He said, we will not sit down until you bring him and we will, uh, until we bring him. And it happened that David so, uh, was the one. And that was just an example of God directly appointing as Rasodic has said. And, uh, and, and so we see the question is who appoints them? God is the ultimate ruler. He has ordained that there will be rule, a leadership that there will be rule, there will be rule, there will be authority, and these people are, are, are fulfilling his purpose, put, uh, making sure that there are orders and rules and, uh, and uh, in place. But, and that is why, why uh, that is one of the reasons why God has appointed them that things will be in order. So let's quickly answer the question, who invented all things? Um, if you please read the Brasodic chapter 12, verse 4, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. But you, Daniel, close up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go and many will go here and there to increase knowledge. I'm done. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, what you're reading, uh, what version are you reading? Is there I'm reading that? Yeah, but that order, you should shut up the, the book, the words, and seal the book, even to the end or to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, talking about the travel we see today. People are, you can, you can eat your breakfast in, in, uh, in England, and eat your dinner in, uh, in, uh, in New York uh, during in the supersonic age. And he said, knowledge shall be increased. Knowledge shall be increased. And we see that. Uh, it is it, uh, it's more is very evident today when we see the inventions that are coming here and there. Um, barely 20, 25 years ago, that we once learned in our Bible, in our Bible in Sunday school lessons, there were no, there were no, uh, well, maybe there were mobile phones, but not to the level it is today. 30 years ago, there was none, but all of a sudden, this thing came and, you know, like, uh, in in a, in, a, in a, uh, astronomical you know speed, this whole thing has increased and it will be still continue to increase more and more. So the Bible has given us said knowledge shall increase more knowledge than we used to know in the past. And uh, when we read Proverbs Proverbs chapter eight verse twelve, it says wisdom dwells with the prudent and um, 
and and we will find out uh, uh, there will be we will be able to find out knowledge of, uh, there will be witty inventions this will be invented because of the knowledge and understanding and again this knowledge and understanding they come from the lord ecclesiastic chapter 9 chapter 7 verse 26 say there will be many inventions and uh, this is because of the increased knowledge increased research and so on and so forth well let us quickly look at uh, that job uh, Mommy Nadi, you are reading Job for us. Yes, please. Uh, verse Look 13. at uh, Chapter 12, verse 13. 12, yes, please. With him is wisdom and strength. He has, he has counsel and understanding. This is making us know that wisdom is with God. Because um, like... You, if we remember the story of Solomon, when God asked him to ask for one thing, and he asked for wisdom to govern the people, and God gave him wisdom and uh, other other things as well. So we know that God is the owner of the wisdom, and he can give whoever asks of him. So we know that uh, whoever wants to rule, and God uh, has uh, appoint, uh, appointed him or has agreed to make him the ruler. He will give him wisdom. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. So we, I don't know if I've given anybody uh, Exodus chapter 31. I will read it anyway. And this is an example of God giving wisdom uh, for somebody, for an invention. And uh, in Exodus chapter 31, from verse 3 to 5, he said, and I have, I have filled, him. if we read from verse 3, he says, see, talking, God was talking to Moses. He said, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Or, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship, to devise cunning works, to work in gold and silver and brass, and in cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of timber, to work in all manner of workmanship. This was an example of God calling somebody by name that he had put in that person the spirit of wisdom and understanding in order to be able to do certain things. And God also is the same. And um, I don't know if uh, any one of us knows what is the motto, the motto of Oxford University. Does anyone know what is the motto of Oxford University? Okay, if we don't know, uh, it says uh, Dominus Illuminatio Nea. And that is taken from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. The world will want to tell us, you see, that by their effort, by the understanding, by their research, they've been able to invent things. But if you look at inventors of the past, the earliest, uh, 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 Copernicus or Isaac Newton, these were men of God, men who knew the Bible, who read the Bible, and God gave them wisdom. And even, uh, I think, uh, 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 I believe, um, uh, that in the Lord, Pastor Debo, he also that when he was doing his PhD, he had an issue, you know, the thing was, you know, he couldn't get the answer he wanted. But by the grace of God, the illumination came and that answer came in the field of mathematics. And he's not the only one. I, I, I can tell you stories of other, even in my own life, where God will give inspiration and answer to a question that ordinarily you, you yourself, you will be baffled. So God is the author of wisdom. And, and like uh, Daniel has said that knowledge shall increase. Is that increase in knowledge that brought about inventions we have had in the past and inventions we have had today? I will, um, I will uh, for example, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not popcorn, but uh, conflicts. I was once reading that um, uh, corn, corn were put in the, in the pot for feeding animals. And then they were supposed to boil it to a certain level and then remove it for feeding the animals. But for some reason, that corn 
the, the it was boiled. I don't know whether it was corn in the husk or corn, corn that has already been shelled, but they were boiling it and it was overboiled. And then not only overboiled, it was left standing. And when the owner came, that corn now has uh, has hardened. And then that's how he was, when he now break it, that's his idea occurred to him that from this corn, that actually you can make flake. And that is how the invention of conflicts. And there are so many accidents, what we call accidents in the world, that actually turn to great inventions later uh, in the life of the individual and in, in the earth, and so on and so forth. So God is the author of wisdom. And for the younger ones, and even for the older ones uh, among us, that God, we can still, God can still give us inspiration to discover things, to do things, to, you know, things, you know, that ordinarily, uh, we might say it's beyond our strength or beyond our ability. And I pray that that will be our portions in Jesus' name. And quickly, uh, because of our time, if um, uh, please uh, ask um, uh, uh, Sister, Sister, is Sister Yemi with us? Yes, sir. Uh, please, can you read for us uh, Isaiah chapter 45 or 7? And um, Adebola, if you can uh, read for us uh, James chapter, chapter, chapter 5 or 7. Okay. And uh, Deborah, are you there? Is Deborah with us? No. Yeah, but I'm here. I'm there, sir. Okay. Um, uh, mommy, Deborah, then read for us uh, Hebrew chapter 12, uh, verse 5, maybe verse 12, 5 to 11. Quickly, please, because of our time. We are looking at the answer to the question who created darkness and evil, and uh, as, is there any benefit in sorrow? Hebrews 12, 5 to 11. Yeah, but first Isaiah chapter 45, okay. verse 7. Who is reading that for us? It's the Lord. Mommy, hear me. Yes, please. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all things. Praise the Lord. So, who created the darkness and who created the light? From the Bible uh, verse that we read, we find out that God created all things. He created all things, and he says there in particular that he created the darkness. Right. Thank you. Darkness, yes. And um, James, James chapter 5 verse 7. Be patient, then, brothers and sisters, unto the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. This, this tells us that whatever we do, we have to be patient and wait, because waiting can lead to something good and that benefits us. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, in that verse seven, it compares it compares uh, our patience to the patience of the husband man, the farmer. A farmer does not put corn or whatever grain in the ground uh, this evening, and then tomorrow he wants to go and harvest it. Is that possible? No. Is that possible? Uh, no. Trust? No, because he need that he needs to grow. He needs to grow, mature, then flower, and then start bearing fruit, and then the fruit will ripen before eventually we harvest it. So also the Lord is telling us, actually, this is answering the question, whether is there any benefit for sorrow? Uh, we will come to that, but he's telling us here that there is a need for patience in whatever we are doing, in whatever challenge we are, we are, we are, we are going through, that at the end of the day, that also will be result. Uh, who is reading for us Hebrew chapter 12 from verse 5? Hebrews 12 verse 5 from 5. 
And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despite not thou the chastisement of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuke of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scorcheth every son which he receiveth. If you enjoy, endure the chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For which son is he whom fathers chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof of all partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Okay, but thank you, my sister. That that will that we do. And what does what does chastisement? What does that mean? If you can please explain to us. I think in, in that in that context, it's telling us that God punishes when we go off way. He finds a way of bringing things to us that will bring us back to the normal part. A little bit of sin would always bring punishment for us. So God is would at one point or the other correct us. And with his love, with the love he has in his heart for us, so that we can come back to the normal way he wants us to be. That's Thank good. you very much. So when when we are chastened, in other words, that God brings discipline upon our life. And in the normal sense, when a person is disciplined, how do we how do we feel? When you're under discipline, is it is it a pleasure, pleasurable thing? No. No. Pardon? No, it's not. It's not so. It's uh, normally discipline brings you. It, it brings sorrows to your heart. One on the one hand, because you you realize yes, this thing has come upon me because I have done bad. And then one, uh, Corinthian, uh, uh, First Corinthians says, you said he, 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 that you is with sorrow unto repentance. That that's sorrow. So you say, is there any benefit of sorrow? Yes, because sorrow, that sorrow out of uh, punishment or chastisement brings us to a place of repentance. And I pray that God will give us wisdom. And he goes on to say, who child, if you are, if you're a good child, uh, or rather if you're a child of your parents and your parents simply, you know, whatever you do goes, that, that is not, that is not, uh, that will not be love. Any, any loving parents, any loving uh, father and mother, when you go wrong, they will put you back in your place and say, what you have done is is uh, is wrong, and you will be disciplined one way or the other. We have a saying that um, it is because the fly, the fly has no, 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 how do we say, it has no, no, nobody to correct it. It has nobody to instruct it. That's why it follows the dead body to the grave. Because that thing is so sweet, you know, it just, um, it just boozing, 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 boozing. Yeah, you put the, the dead the dead body into the grave, it goes into it, and the essence of it that that fly gets covered and buried with the with the with the with the dead body. But a child that is disciplined, a child, uh, whether a child as an adult by your parents or a child as a little child, uh, a, as an adult by God or by your leader, it is chastening and by the Lord, and that brings that brings um that brings uh, that brings it is sorrow at the beginning, but then that sorrow it brings uh, it brings uh, joy when we are, we are after on the one hand you you discipline on the, with the other hand you embrace the child or you embrace the person back. So also God will discipline us, but when we have passed through the, the discipline, it brings us back into fellowship. And I pray that that will be a portion in Jesus' name. Um, somebody has sent a question here, and uh, the question. Sorry, uh, let me look at the chat box. He says uh, quickly. He says. Uh, he says. Uh, why does God create darkness or evil? Um, the, if I may answer that as much as I can, that God, God does not create. Uh, God does not create, or rather, the darkness. Darkness came upon the earth as a result of the evil uh, or the sin of man. But God created light, and when there is light, what happens? Darkness will flee. And we see that from the very beginning, God created light in order to overcome darkness. And uh, when you say darkness, I can understand that you are meaning darkness of evil. Why? Because the heart of men are what they are. And then the question you are asking, why are there bad leaders? 
I will take you back to the to the to the uh, with for that answer to the two kings of Israel. I take you back to Saul, the king of Israel, in uh, starting from uh, first uh, first Samuel chapter thirteen. He was appointed as king, ordained as the first king of uh, Israel. How did he become bad? First, he became willful when he was humble in his sight. God blessed him. But when eventually with one, one, one disobedience, second disobedience, third of disobedience, God now, you know, left him. It's like a, a somebody who is today, you are a child of God, you have been born again by the grace of God. But little by little, you leave, you leave, you leave the path of God, you start slipping into, you leave the path of God, and before you know, you fall into sin. What happens? The enemy takes over you or takes over your heart. And one person, one day, or one, at a point in time, you are a righteous, you are good, you follow God, and the next time they see you, you have now become a drunkard, a wayward person. What has happened? Because you have made a choice, and that choice you have made has landed you to where you are. And then take from there the second king of uh, the second king of, of Israel, uh, David. God again also appointed him as king. And David, even the Bible says, was a man after his own heart. But David eventually, in the matter of Uriah, when he sinned, what happened? Because when he should have been at war, he was at home. He saw that naked woman. He saw her wounds. He would have put away his eyes if he was if he was in full in the fullness of the spirit. But he looked second. He looked third, and then eventually he went on and committed, you know, immorality. The question is, was God that led him? Was it God that led him to commit evil? No. Uh, but simply, the heart of man is wicked. The heart of man is evil. And if that heart of man is not nourished by the word of God and admonition, we will fall into decay. Take your hand, for example, your healthy hand, put it in a sling for one week. And after one week, try to stretch it and see what happens. That hand will become stiff. It will become immovable. You will need to exercise it in order. It's also with the heart of man. What are we doing here? We are doing Bible study. We want to nourish our heart, we want to be admonished, we want to be instructed by the word of God. If we do not do this and keep it, keep on at it on the, uh, with all diligence, that heart will fall into imbecility, that heart will fall into ignorance, that heart eventually will end up in sin, and still we end up in evil. So you ask the question, why are there bad leaders? God has instituted the, the position of leadership, but God is not responsible for the leadership. Today in this country, we are going through that. A man has a character. That character has been, if you look at his history, has doggedly, doggedly followed him, but he has not been able to sit down and said, if I do not take care of this character, it will ruin me. He has allowed it to fester and fester and fester, and now it has become an open sore, a gangrenous sore. And now the whole world is seeing it. It becomes a laughing, a laughing, a laughing stock. So also yourself and myself, if we do not take diligence, if we do not watch our heart with all diligence through the word of God, we will fall into decay. Any king, any monarch, if he does not watch and fear God, even though he starts good, he will end up evil. That is my contribution. And because of our time, which is well overshot, can we please uh, ask the pastor please to uh, finish with us in prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I believe we are being blessed uh, today. And the, it's only the children. Uh, we understand that even God, our Father, uh, can chastise us. So children too, you can be chastised by your parents. It's part of uh, God's uh, desire. Praise the Lord. Uh, there's one revelation God gave me uh, recently, and somebody, just to answer the question, somebody asked that, why do we have bad leaders if God is the one that created those leaders? Uh, and it was just sudden, it wasn't something I was thinking, suddenly God gave me that revelation. And look at uh, leaders that God ordained in the scripture. 
I've never seen the one that was ordained as, apart from Jesus Christ, as Samson. It was God inside Samson. David will fight nations with men of war, men, mighty men of war. But Samson alone fight nations. One person, he doesn't need to have gun. He can use bare hands. He can use jaw, I mean, jaw of, a, of, of, of an animal. He will fight a whole nation. But suddenly, we found out that the most indisciplined person in the Bible, or one of the most indisciplined, is Samson. And God was carrying him until suddenly God said, you know what? I washed my hand off and he became bad and he lost his uh, destiny. I pray that we will not lose our destiny in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Everything God created, God created us to be good. When God chose a leader, he meant that leader to be good. But that leader chose to be bad. Either via uh, indiscipline or spiritual kind of sins and they become bad. And that's why, they, like King Saul's, pride set in. Instead of fear of God, he began to fear men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's how he became a bad leader. Many like that because they forgot who created them, who put them in that position. And they, 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 they went real, and that's how they became bad leaders and so on. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, I think one of us, uh, every one of us here tonight has picked one or two things about the creator. You know, the Bible said that this knowledge will increase. That means that everything we are seeing today is already there. The secret belong to God. The wisdom belong to God. People are just discovering it. And I pray God will give us grace to discover his secrets in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the light of that, I don't know. It's a very interesting topic. Does any of the children want to ask any question about what we have learned today? Does anybody ask question? Maybe adults? Mm -hmm. Uh, I just have um, a contribution. Okay. Um, we see that in in one of the passages it says God created good and evil. When we are in the side of the evil, it means like like uh, God is trying to chastise us. And uh, it's trying to bring us back to him. Because once we realize we are on the uh, dark side, we have to repent. Otherwise, we see the imminent danger ahead. And then we have to retrace our steps and uh, ask for the forgiveness of sins. And God is always trying to bring us back to him by making us fall in the evil side when we are not listening to what he's telling us. That's just the contradiction. All right. Let's go. Thank, thank you, Ma. Um, you know, the, the work of the devil for Christian is an, an examiner. Yeah. You know, he tried to examine you, testing your faith, testing your obedience, testing your discipline. Yeah. And most of the time, uh, when you fail, then you are going to be penalized for failing. And uh, when you pass, you are going to be upgraded. I mean, to be upgraded for, for passing the test. And I pray that none of us will fail in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, in Jesus' name, Amen. just want to say thank you tonight for your word that has come expressly unto us regarding who is creator. Thank God because you open our eyes to see that you are the creator of all 
things and everybody that is looking at themselves or thinking about themselves as a creator, you created them. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We return all the glory for creating us. And oh Lord God, everything you created, even as your children, they are good. And for us, you have chosen us to be good. Lord, we want to return all the glory unto you in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you have not created in a life that is no part and parcel of what you created with us and is dwelling with us today? The fire of Holy Ghost consume in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Your word said, I am a consuming fire. God, is there anything in us that is no part of what you have created? with us from the beginning. God Almighty, consumed by your fire in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God, we pray. Is there anything we desire? And we don't have. God Almighty, because you are the creator of the creators, King of glory, come and create them for us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. As many of us desire wisdom, create wisdom for us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. As many of us desire discipline, Create discipline for us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lord, we just want to say thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord. And we pray, Lord, the grace for us to dwell on your word and obedience to your word release upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father, because we are going to do so. Thank, thank you. Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's share the grace. And the grace, the grace of the Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, love the love of God, and the love of the Holy Spirit, be with us now. Amen. 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 God, bless and 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 bless I think we are blessed tonight and we hope to see you on Sunday. Let's come out and say.